Hi, I'm Eric from RockyMountainATVMC.com, and today we're doing our initial impression and walk around of KTM's new 2019 690R. For those of you that follow us, you know that we love the 690-701 platform. And when we start to hear some, luckily, unsubstantiated rumors that the 690 might be going away to make room for the new 790, we, we were pretty concerned. But luckily, uh, what KTM gave us was a nicely refined 690, and we're, we're stoked about it. You know, some of the changes real quick, some of the main changes, we'll get into some details, but the main changes are, you know, they, they revised the styling a little bit. You know, that's pretty obvious. Um, they also gave it a little bit more horsepower, uh, revised the electronics. That's probably the big thing on this bike is the electronic package uh, as far as traction control and, you know, more ABS settings, things like that. They also upgraded the suspension. So now it's the full WP Explorer package. So let's get into the details a bit. So it's still the same 690cc LC4 based engine. That, this engine has been around for a long, long time. Super reliable, they keep making updates to it, but in its current form, it's bulletproof. Uh, still a single cylinder, great big piston going up and down inside there. And you know, they did do something this year, they added another counterbalancer to get rid of some of the vibes. So the vibration's really down, counterbalancing that huge piston. Um, power output, so this year they're claiming 73 horsepower. And that last year in 2018, they claimed 67. So you should definitely be able to feel that much of an increase in power. The clutch. So it still has the same hydraulically actuated PASC clutch, power assisted clutch. Uh, it's a slipper clutch as well. I, I can't get over how smooth this clutch is. It has got to be the smoothest clutch action of any bike out there. It's, it's great, I love this clutch. Now the slipper clutch is cool because when you're banging down gears coming into a corner, especially on pavement, um, it's gonna let that, that rear wheel slip a little bit. You still have plenty of engine braking, you, you won't even feel it. The only thing you are gonna feel is that it's not hopping around and sliding, skipping, coming into the corners. So that's, that's awesome. So in combination with the awesome clutch, it's made it to a six speed transmission. The cool thing, and one of the big things this year, is that they've added the quick shifter plus system. And it's actually really cool. You see this on street bikes more, but you basically hit the gas full throttle and you shift it. And every time you shift, it cuts the injection system just momentarily enough to slide it into the next gear. And it's, it's you know, it feels seamless. It shifts really fast. And a cool part is that actually when you shift down, it does similar. So when you're shifting down, when you press on the shift lever, it actually matches the RPM um, with you know with your speed so it it blips the throttle a little bit and matches that all so combined with that and the slipper clutch when you're banging down gears coming into a corner that back end's not going to move at all this machine uses the kian ems system the engine management system uh, it's a throttle by wire and so there's no throttle cable and the benefit to that is that you can use all this advanced electronics with this, this machine so we just talked about the quick shifter that's possible because it's a ride by wire throttle system. Um, the traction control, that's possible because of the ride by wire. So the, the Keen system's been out for a while and shouldn't be glitchy at all. Uh, the engine is hung on a chromoly trellis frame. KTM's been using these on their big bikes and their 690s for a while, tried and true. So while we're talking about the electronics package, the EMS system, it also uses Bosch's 9.1 ABS and traction control system. One of the cool parts I like about it is 
that you can turn it on or you can turn it all the way off, okay? You, you don't have to have any interference with your traction control or your ABS if that's the way you wanna do it. Um, one thing, and it's really the only thing we've added to this bike other than a kickstand foot, is that we added KTM's dongle. And that's really its name. But what it is, is it holds your ABS settings. So if you turn off the key and turn it back on, it doesn't reset to the defaults. It'll hold your, your ABS setting. And our, it also adds an ABS setting. This dongle adds an off-road ABS. And the cool thing about that is, is you can still lock up your rear tire so you can slide into corners, whatever you're doing, but it retains ABS on the front wheel. And that's really the setting I like on these machines. That's the one I do probably 99% of the time. So that's definitely a, a must have. At some point, hopefully KTM is gonna be adding those stock, but haven't done it yet. Uh, they restyled it a bit. I definitely like it. They say it looks a little bit more like their, maybe their um, EXC line, and I totally agree. I think it looks great. So speaking of the styling, you know, the little changes they made there, one of the byproducts of that was, it looks like they've changed the fuel cap. Uh, those of us that spent time with the 690s in the past know that it's pretty easy to get dirt down in your tank. Um, we're gonna mess around with this a little bit today and see if that's still a problem. It looks like it might be a little bit better. We'll, we'll see. Uh, something else, you know, talking about the fuel tank is that they've upped the fuel capacity on this. They've added a liter to it. So we're at 13.5 liters or 3.6 gallons. That's, you know, last year it was 3.2 gallons. So that, that's a little bit more. I wonder if it's going to be enough. You know, I'm guessing with this, with the 3.6, you're going to be able to get about 160 mile range, which is better. We'll take it for sure. Speaking of distance, it's gonna take a whole bunch of refueling to get to the 6,200 mile service interval. That's awesome. We love to see that, especially on adventure bikes. So let's talk about this seat. Um, it seems to be, I re I'm really not sure how to say this nicely, but it seems to be severely lacking in foam. Um, Lyndon and Robert over at Sea Concepts are really gonna have their work cut out for them, trying to make this thing comfortable. Now the seat height, it's coming in at, you know, the specs say, you know, 910 millimeters and that's what, 35.8 inches. That's the same as last year's specs. So we had heard that it was gonna be a lower seat height. Uh, we're not seeing it on the specs. All right, let's talk about the suspension. So starting with the front forks, we have the 48 millimeter WP Explore forks. Uh, that's, it's the same forks with different settings that you're going to find on the EXC and the XCW lines. Has a separate dampening for compression and rebound. Uh, springs in both legs. It makes it so you can adjust your settings right from the top. So you don't have to get off the bike, pull out tools, anything like that. 250 millimeters of travel. It has a forged top triple clamp instead of the old cast. And the shock is a linkage type. Once again, it's the Explore rear shock. So again, 250 millimeters of travel. And I can't wait to put a little, little bit more time on this and, and really see how they function. Okay, since we're talking about suspension, let's talk about the weight of this thing because it definitely affects the suspension. Uh, it's a little surprising, to be honest. It's coming in, they're claiming 321 pounds dry. And last year, it was only 309 pounds. So that's a 12 pound increase. I can see maybe with the extra counterbalancer, you got a little bit of weight there maybe some more of the uh, electronics, but you know, it's still, that's still pretty light when you're comparing this thing to the, you know, the big adventure bikes, the leader bikes, you know, they're coming in at 500 plus pounds. So I don't know, we'll see. So tires come stock on this are TKC 80s. Uh, they are a solid tire. They're a great tire. We actually, they're probably one of our favorite tires for our big adventure bikes. Uh, for this little bit smaller bike, for our type of riding, sometimes we like something a little bit more aggressive, but still good starting place. Um, and then let's talk about living with this thing a little bit, right? It's, it's the, the everyday, the maintenance, things like that. And it's pretty straightforward. These bikes are proven to be uh, bulletproof. They've got the really long service interval, uh, 6,200 miles. Who, who's gonna complain about that? You know, oil changes. They, uh, it does have two oil filters, so it takes a little bit extra time, but again, service interval like that, it just doesn't matter. Uh, the air filter, they haven't, doesn't look like they've changed the air box or the air filter 
And that's something that I've struggled with a little bit in the past with the stock uh, paper filter. I've got a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of dust passed and into my intake. And we have found that KTM's hard parts, uh, they've got a foam filter that you can really grease up and, and get that sealing surface to really work and, and keep your intake nice and clean. So living with this thing, no big deal. So that's the details. That's pretty much the, the bullet points we want to go over. Now we're going to go out there and actually ride it, right? That's what we've all been waiting for. We'll get out there. I'll give you my thoughts while we're out there riding. Then we'll circle back and we'll do a conclusion, give you my likes and my dislikes, and we'll go from there. All right. That's what we've all been waiting for. Let's jump on this thing and go check it out. Let's get this party started. All right. So jumping on it, you know, first thing you notice is, you know, the ride height's the ride height's about uh, very similar to the old one. You know, I'm not flat-footed by any means. It's tippy toes. And I'm, what, 5'9", five, 5'8 five, and a half, something like that. But, uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty similar. So first thing is we're in drive mode one and the traction control light is lit, saying that there's, normally when this is lit, that means there, the traction control is not working, okay? So that means you've switched it off or you've just started it and it needs to rotate to uh, reset itself, right? So I'm just gonna roll forward a couple feet here and that light's gonna go off, okay? So now what this is telling me is that traction control is active, okay? there's. The, the light is off, that means there's no problems with the traction control, and I am in ride mode one. Drive mode one is considered their street mode. So it is probably more of an active um, throttle. So it's the, the throttle response is more immediate, and it has a more intrusive traction control. So we don't want to be slipping and sliding around on asphalt, and so this traction control is a little bit more intrusive. Okay, now if I want to shut traction control off in street mode, I can do that. You press the traction control button, and it's, it's about five seconds. So the light lights up, and what that's saying is, is that traction control is not working. It's a little confusing with the lights back and forth, but it's telling you that traction control is off right here. So right here, I'm in street mode, drive mode one, which is a street mode, and my traction control is off, okay? Now, I want to go to drive mode two, but I want to use traction control, okay? So this number two is the off-road mode. And so it is a little bit smoother throttle response, um, and it has traction control, but it's less intrusive. So it lets a little bit of slip. So you can get the back end out just a little bit, but it's gonna taper that back as well, okay? So now if I want to go off-road mode and I don't want any traction control, I don't want anything messing with, you know, I want to peel out, burn rubber, whatever it is. So I'm going to hold this again for five seconds. Let off. So now I'm in off-road mode, so drive mode two, and my traction control is off. All right? That's what that setting is. Now, ABS is something similar. You know, we talked about putting the dongle in it right now. So I have the dongle in it, and so normally this would be solid on. The light is on when your track, when your ABS is not functioning. Okay, so it's saying, "Hey, I'm lighting up to tell you to tell you that the the ABS is not on." Okay, you can hold this down for five seconds, turn it back off turn it back on, whatever you want. That's, that's the button you do for your ABS. Um, if you don't have the dongle, you have to do it every time you start the bike, every time you turn on the key, it forgets its setting and goes back to default, and default is ABS street mode. Okay, so I put the dongle in there. I'm off-road off -road ABS, so that means I have, on the front, I've got anti-lock brake, but on the rear, I can lock up the rear tire. Okay, and that's what the slow flashing's telling me. You know, we read everything is going to have a lower seat height, and and uh, to be honest, when you get on it, it still feels tall, still measuring tall, specs are saying it's tall, 
but when you're riding this, it almost feels like the center of gravity is lower. It feels more stable. It feels like you can change direction on these corners a little better. And I and I wonder, you know, if what what's going on there? Is it just a counterbalancer? You know, the gyroscopic effect of that counterbalancer, or exactly what's going on? But the net result is. It feels very planted, and it feels like you can change direction no problem. All right, let's let's do an example of this quick shifter working on a a nice big road. It's a little slick, but uh, I'm just gonna just run it up the road. So I've got an off-road mode too. I've got my traction control off, and so really all we're hearing here is just the uh, the quick shifter right so I'm just gonna take off and clutches out okay and then I'm just gonna give it throttle I'm not gonna let off for shifts I'm just gonna hold the throttle steady and what you're gonna hear is the injection cutting out while it shifts and then coming back on okay so shut my screen so you can hear me a little bit. So now I'm gonna start banging gears down, okay? Open this back up where it's a little quieter so you can hear, but listen to the motor. So not once there did the back end break loose at all, and I'm on a slick dirt road. So on the pavement, it's even better. So you just bang down through the gears and the quick shifter system actually increases the RPMs. And, and working with the slipper clutch, that back end's gonna stay right where it needs to be. It's a pretty slick system. Oh, one, one more thing on the shifting. As the old bikes, even the 701, there's some false neutrals going on. There's normally one between second and third and there's normally one between fifth and sixth. At least on our 701 and my 690 and the boss's old 690. And I haven't missed a shift yet today, so that's good news. Mid 90s, pretty easy. Let's try this thing out on a little bit of street, a little bit of pavement. We're gonna leave it in street mode, but I am gonna turn the traction control on. So that's something to get to use, get used to a little bit. So I was getting ready to shift as anticipating shifting and I kind of uh, took the slack out of the shifter as it were. You kind of put a little pressure up until you're ready to shift then you're, you slip it in really quick. Well, the sensor said that I was doing it and it cut my power, but I wasn't ready to shift yet. So kind of something interesting, but definitely something I can get used to. You know, a cool side effect of it is it doesn't upset the bike going around the corner. Like if you were to clutch it and be a little slow with your clutch, you would definitely feel uh, you, the bike kind of does a little wiggle, you know, mid corner. And with this, it shifts so quick that there's none of that. So definitely cool. It's just a really comfortable bike as far as handling and balance and I definitely like the new suspension both, you know, I haven't done a bunch of on-road yet, but 
you can tell you can tell all these little bumps and stuff it's not jarring you um, again the seat there's got to be something going on with the seat I really haven't been on it that long today and I'm already wishing for something different yeah cruising along that's 70 right there it just feels super smooth you know there's quite a bit of wind resistance but they make you know there is some little uh, screens that go on them that actually helps keep it off your chest quite a bit but it's still pretty comfortable that way I, I like the riding position I like the bars I like where they're at it's just this seat you know I haven't actually even sat down very much today and I'm feeling it a little bit it is definitely on the list of things to change and try to make better for sure all right guys so I want to show you the difference between um, the off-road traction control being active and no traction control at all so there's this cool little s turn up here and the first time I'm gonna run it I'm gonna run it with the traction control off So it'll stay sideways for quite a while. And to be honest, I could have even done it more. I just wasn't sure if someone was coming the other way. So let's go back and I'm gonna go run it again. Only I'm gonna turn on the off-road drive mode and traction control. And so what that's gonna do is let it step out a little bit and I know that the, the washboards are going to mess with it a little bit too. So it'll be interesting to see here. Traction control is active in the off-road drive mode. So it, It's only stepping out a couple inches, just barely. It is churning. You can hear it churning back there. And, and like I thought, the, uh, the washboards were, were a little rough on it too. It was getting a little confused. It was getting a little too much wheel spin. And then it was kind of messing with my corner a little bit. So, yep, there you go. Definitely safer, more controlled, if that's what you're after. All right, I think I like the traction control off for this stuff. It just feels like right when you come out of the corner and you initially hit the gas, it doesn't let that little initial slip. And sometimes I'm trying to turn with the back tire a little bit and it cuts that ignition. So I think something tight like this, I think for sure you want uh, that traction control off. The 1190 and the 1290 have this more advanced, you know, this 5D sensor in it, and it senses your lean angle. So when you're leaned over and on the gas, it's not going to let you slip as much as when you're in a straight line, maybe, you know, trying to do a, a drag race type deal or something like that. So it senses when the bike is tipped over. You know, the 1090 didn't have that sophisticated of a system. It had tra it's got traction control and it's got, you know, the ABS and all that, but it doesn't have this extra 5D sensor to it. And that's actually really cool. I think probably on the street, you're gonna notice it a little bit more. But uh, either way, it's, it's pretty cool. Get a fill for the suspension. We have a lot of desert races out here, so. Man, I think it feels like, it's like wheelies for days. You definitely feel the weight a little bit. 
especially compared to a dirt bike, but. You know, the suspension feels really good. I know it's hard to tell on a GoPro, but some pretty good bumps. Yeah, this just feels like a big dirt bike. That's awesome. Very controlled suspension. The steering's awesome. And I haven't touched the clickers from stock. You know, that was a big whoop. No drama. It's what we like. <laughs> uh, just doubling some loops. So the suspension again. Just a little recap here. Definitely can tell a difference. You know, stock stock to stock on this Explorer. On my old 690 it would have not really wanted me to do this. I've had the old one revalved and resprung. It's pretty decent now but it's still not as controlled as this one is right off the bat. You know something else I gotta confess too is I normally ride these bikes with camping gear on it so to be riding it empty they feel really light and nimble so I'm curious what you know we'll get the gear on there and see what she feels like but down the road you want to stay tuned for that for sure and of course we're going to be doing doing builds you know basically turn this into the bike that we want to we want to spend some time with this bike's actually going to be the owners oh as long as I can take it back unscathed so the bike he's going to ride this year so we'll get it all set up and do a video on it and share with you what we've done and why. And I could do this all day. Man. I've been having a blast out here today. Uh, the weather's perfect. I'm loving where we're riding. It's beautiful. And that's kind of what adventure riding is. You know, it's what, what's what these dual sport bikes do. You can take off from work head out in the country and really enjoy yourself. You know, so as I'm out here riding around, you know, I'm thinking about what are my likes? What are my favorite things about this bike, about this refined 690? And to be honest, number one, and maybe a little bit most surprising, is the suspension and handling. And it just feels like a dirt bike. I mean, albeit a, a heavy dirt bike, but I can do things with this that I wouldn't expect I could. You know, we, we spent a little bit of time out here on a on desert course. You know, there's some whooped out trails and in the trees and then the fast stuff out on the roads is kind of rolly and it's just, it's a really comfortable bike. It's really stable. It feels like that the, you know, it talked about a little bit before about the center of gravity. I, I don't know if it is or not. I don't know if it's the balancer, but whatever it is, this bike feels really low to the ground as far as handling. And uh, you know, <laughs> I just, I, I really can't get over it. And then, you know, something else I really liked was how good it felt on the pavement and on the fast sections of dirt road. You know, sometimes you get something to work off road really well and you get on, you get on a, a fast road and all the little bumps are really sharp and they really, they kind of pound your spine as you're sitting on the seat. And this isn't like that, this is very comfortable. I mean, it's, it's firm on, in those situations, but it's still very, very comfortable. And, you know, getting onto the electronics, 
I like the electronics. I'm, I'm a fan of them. Um, maybe more so on the great big bikes where it's really hard to control, you know, 160 horsepower or, or whatever the, you know, the 1290 has and getting around a corner. This one you can modulate a little bit more and control with your throttle, but I like the ability to do it if I want to do it. If I'm feeling like I just want to chill out and cruise down a road and it'll make it that much safer for me, right? Come around a corner, it's not going to get completely sideways, but I can press a button and within three to five seconds, I've got my traction control shut off. I can change my modes and I can go out there and I can slide around any corner I want to. So it's, <laughs> It's very interesting. You know, something else that was a little surprising about the electronics is that you can really tell the difference. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, I think I felt that, or, you know, especially where we test, you know, I, I end up on quite a few bikes and, and I'm, I try my hardest to give you guys an honest opinion of what I feel. And when I'm out there on these bikes, sometimes I wonder, I'm like, am I really feeling a difference? But you absolutely can. I mean, you put this thing on street mode with the traction control on, and it barely moves because it's sensing wheel spin and cutting the power. And it's not, it's not a violent, um, the traction control doesn't come in harshly. It comes in very smooth. You really have to pay attention to feel it working, but it, it is working. Uh, I really like this shifting. Uh, it took me a minute to get used to it this morning. Uh, it really felt good on the pavement. You know, when you're the, the up shifting on the pavement, I talked about a little bit coming around a corner and you're right in that apex of the corner and you grab another gear and it just, the bike doesn't get upset when you do that. It just stays in its curve and feels very comfortable. And shifting down on the pavement, you can hear the RPMs come up before it shifts. And it's, it's cool, I really like it. Something else I really find myself liking about this bike is its looks. I'm shallow enough to say it. I think it looks great. <laughs> and that, believe it or not, some people base a lot of their decision on that. And it's a cool bike and it looks cool and I'm a big fan. And really the last thing I like about this bike is everything. I mean, seriously, KTM really hit it on the head with this bike. It, they really did. It, they took a bike that I really enjoy, the 69701. I really enjoy it. And they've taken it and made it that much better. And so, I, to, to be honest, I would go out and if, if it's my money, I'm putting my money on this bike. This bike is gonna be in my garage. I, I like it that much. Now, you know, I'm gonna be a little nitpicky here and I, and I apologize. You guys are probably going, oh, he's such a baby. But, but really, one thing I don't like and I, I'm a little frustrated, but I want some more fuel capacity. Whether it's for it's something that's an add-on or whatever else it is. I've got to have 200 miles out of this bike because especially you get days like today and you just don't want to stop. And out here in the West, especially, we, we need 200 miles to get between gas stations, especially out in Nevada even. Um, so we'll end up probably putting some aftermarket tanks on it. Um, hopefully they fit. Uh, if not, we're going to have to wait for the aftermarket to catch up. But, um, Another thing that I really want them to address is the pegs. These pegs are just the regular off-road motorcycle peg. And with the motor as wide as it is, and over on the clutch side especially, the clutch cover sticks out a little bit. And you feel like you're kind of riding on the inside of your foot all day because you can't get your boot all the way up next to the frame. And, you know, there's, there's a bunch of options out there. We sell them, but uh, it's just the wider pegs. KTM makes a rally peg. IMS has pegs. Everybody has pegs. So that's definitely going on the bike. You know, a couple other things that are going to go on this bike that, uh, you know, we'll be doing a build, so make sure and stay tuned. But just a little spoiler alert. Um, this bike comes with pretty decent uh, protection right off the bat. It has some flag hand guards that are, that are pretty good, but I'm a wraparound kind of guy. I like to wrap around aluminum hand guards. I don't want to be off in the boonie somewhere, tip it over and break a lever off. Also the skid plate, it has a skid plate on it. It's made out of plastic. It's pretty decent, but with the trellis frame, that engine hangs out down below the frame and there's really nothing protecting it from a major hit from a rock. And so we're going to put something a little bit more burly down there. Um, of course, we're going to mount luggage to it. We need to be able to take this thing and camp. So that's something that's going to go on it. The tires, uh, very impressed with the TKCs today. 
but we're gonna put something a little bit more aggressive on there. And uh, we might even end up with a steering stabilizer. I did a couple high speed runs and I got a little bit, maybe a little bit of shake, a little bit of wag. And it, it actually, the stabilizer just makes it so when you put in these big long days on dirt roads and you know, not necessarily on road, it just, it just takes a little bit more fatigue out of the equation. So that's something that's gonna show up. But other than that, this is a, a, a perfect palette to start this beautiful build. So make sure and stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, especially if you like content like this. Uh, we have videos coming out all the time, different builds. Um, but yeah, follow along as we, as we get to know this a little bit better and, and build it up. Um, make sure and check out our website, rockymountainatvmc.com, and we'll catch you next time.